Thanks everyone for joining us today. My name is Jacques. I am here in the uh, Canny uh, Success team and uh, very happy to walk you through best practices for Canny. So we are going to go ahead and talk through a few things here. Driving feedback is the main goal here. So why are we looking to get more feedback? We're going to talk through that, go over some practical strategies you can implement, do a quick recap, and then we'll go ahead and move into Q&A. So again, a reminder, please, if you're just joining us, be using that Q&A button in Zoom if you have questions. And again, we are recording today's webinar. So let's dive right in. So why solicit feedback? Well, first of all, we want to go ahead and identify product opportunities. Pretty obvious, but the more posts that you have, those are more opportunities for people to come and uh, you know give ideas and suggest things, and that may spark other things. You'd be surprised at the things that a user suggests, and employees who have been here for years are like, I never thought of that. So obviously we want that. We want to free up support resources. This speaks to me quite a bit uh, because I do come from a support background. Uh, but a lot of times users will just want to give feedback. And there's not really a suggestion box they can just go up to and give feedback. They have to get a hold of someone on your support team. So Kenny is that suggestion box that kind of frees people up uh, to go ahead and handle actual questions. And then optimizing resources, obviously that is a huge one here. We all know how precious uh, development resources are in tech. So having your devs working on those quick wins, those big bets, those things that are going to make the biggest difference. That's why we want that feedback in to make sure that we have our priorities in order and that we're making the most of what we have. So with that, let's go ahead and talk through some strategies. I still see some people are trickling in. So just a reminder, please be sending in your questions using the Q&A button. And we are recording today's session here. So let's talk through some strategies. Well, first of all, adding a link to Canny uh, inside of your product. This is huge because it does give people a permanent place to give feedback. We recommend putting it uh, in like a settings menu or a support page or help docs or things like that. Places where people are thinking about using your product and not actually looking to use your product. Uh, but make it easy for people to give feedback, have a, have a link inside where people can go ahead and have that. It's also very easy to set this up. You don't need a whole lot of technical knowledge to just put a link in somewhere, and it directs the user exactly where you want them to go. So you can send them to a particular post if, uh, you know, this has come up a lot and you're in a support article and you can go ahead and say, hey, if you'd like updates on this, go ahead and click here and add your vote to this post. Feel free to comment, things like that. Uh, you can send them to a change log entry if it's something that's already been released but keeps getting brought up. Uh, so you do have that. Uh, the real con is that it directs them outside your product and you know, it opens up a fresh tab have and sends them out. Um, but users are pretty used to that behavior. So with that, let's take a look at this in action and see what that's going to look like. So I'm going to head over to our friends here at ClickUp, and they have us here in the help menu. So if I go down here and select help, uh, you can see I can request a feature and it looks like there is something new. They actually do use the Canny change log widget. So I can go through and see what is new in that change log. Now we'll go ahead and, whoops, accidental click there, close that up, and uh, we'll go ahead and request a feature. Now, ClickUp is using the slash create here, so that's this nice, clean creation form. Um, just add slash create, but you can also send them straight to the board. This way, people can also scroll through and be like, ooh, that sounds nice. I'd like that. Let me just go ahead and add my boat. Um, you can send them to a particular post. You can send them to a create form, change log to the main roadmap, and I can see all the boards here. So up to you where that link actually goes. But... That is very helpful. And because they do have Canny installed using our install docs, um, this is going to identify me. I don't know if you noticed, but when I clicked on request a feature, my photo pops right up. ClickUp is saying, hey, Kenny, this is Jacques. So I don't have to identify myself to Kenny. ClickUp is doing that for me. So make sure you have that in your install as well. Now, let's go ahead and head back over to strategy number two which is to embed a board. So a big pro of this is there's no leaving the product. It's a lot quicker for people to give feedback. It feels more native. You can add context as well around that board. Uh, the only real con is here that there's no change log or roadmap uh, yet in terms of that widget, but this is really just to capture feedback. So that's that's kind of okay. Now let's uh, let's see what that looks like here. 
when I go to our friends at Taskade. So they have a black background and the canny uh, widget here is white. So it provides a nice contrast. I kind of like it uh, because it shows here is the canny portion and here is the Taskade portion. So this page is hosted by Taskade. It's not hosted by canny. And you can see they have different boards integrated here. It all feels like a single page. You can add, uh, you know, copy, you can add instructions, things like that around this widget view. So very, very helpful to have the widget. It's going to make it very easy and very, it feels very native to the product to be able to just boom, leave feedback right then and there. All right. And by the way, uh, we do have the details for installing that here at developers.canny.io. Just go to the widget and here we'll go ahead and find all of that information. Now, let's go ahead and check out Number three, relying on integrations. So the pros here are there are less training for canny admins because the people who are in there are, you know, they're using the tools they already have. There's just a canny component to the tool they're already using. So you don't really have to train them on how to use canny per se. Uh, it's just an extension of the tool they already have. This also creates relationships between posts, um, especially if you're using, uh, like, say, our Salesforce or our HubSpot integrations. Uh, you know, I, as a salesperson at your organization, can say, hey, this $10,000 deal is now linked to this post. And that way, my developers on the back end who are in canny can be like, hey, we can unlock a $10,000 deal here and get our sales team to close that if we do this one post. So it creates those relationships. It's going to be very, very helpful for you. Um, the only real con is that feedback may be a bit less detailed uh, when it comes through an integration. But uh, sorry about that. Just tap my microphone. But um, but no worries. And, and this varies by integration, by the way. Uh, but it's pretty easy to fill it out to fill out and add more meat once you have the bones in for that. So just to show you an example here, and these are some of the integrations that we offer, by the way, feel free to take a look, canny.io slash integrations. Um, and let's take a look, for example, at our intercom integration. So here, if I have a feature request, I can go ahead and add my voice. And that will open up Canny right inside of Intercom. I don't have to interact with support. I can just go create a post or vote on existing posts here. So that's one example of an integration at work. Uh, we also have, you know, a Slack integration. When you're having a conversation with your team, you can quickly create a post or add feedback. Uh, we also, by the way, do have a Chrome extension. So say I'm on your sales team. This sales guy uh, or this deal I'm trying to close, it says, hey, we need dark mode enabled. So right from here, I can go ahead and open it up. Uh, it's a little blended into my browser because I have canny colors everywhere in case that wasn't obvious. And here we can go ahead. Yeah, you can see it actually does fill in the user information if they already exist here. And I can say, yep, this is a feature request. They want uh, dark mode. So here I can see, oh, dark mode is already there. I can go ahead and add that vote and boom, all done. So that way, it's it's very easy for your team to go ahead and do that. And like I said, this is just an extension of what they're already doing. I didn't have to go into Canny. I didn't have to navigate over to Canny. I just opened up that extension, and it was as easy as all that. So last but not least is sending out an email link. So here with the email link, this is a direct call to action. Uh, it's going to be active versus passive. And this is this is you going up to someone and saying, hey, I'm interrupting you. Stop what you're doing. I would like your feedback on this. Now, the only con is that it's only good for a short burst of feedback. So, you know, people don't open the same email multiple times. Typically, uh, this is just saying, hey, you, I would like your feedback on this. Here's where you can give it. And boom, people can go ahead and get that. So it is helpful in that sense, uh, but don't rely on just this. Hey, we uh, introduced them, we onboarded them, and we sent them a link to Kenny in an email. Boom, we're done. It's, it's not ideal for that. But the winner of all these strategies is all of the above, of course. So you're going to want to add links to Canny in your product. You're going to want to embed boards when and where is appropriate. Integrate with the tools you're already using. And yeah, on occasion, ask people for feedback. So all of that, going over some of the key points here, find out what works for your product, for your community, for your users. Um, you know, different strategies are going to be more prominent depending on the culture, the product, the uh, the market, the use case, all of that's going to factor in here. The ultimate goal, though, to keep in mind is just more feedback. How do we get more people to give us feedback? And really, it's 
lifting barriers, make it so that it's one click. It's very simple for people to give feedback. Just like, you know, uh, you're more likely to go to the gym, the closer you live to the gym. Fun fact. Well, you're more likely to give feedback, the fewer barriers there are between, I have an idea to improve this product. And here's where I can give that idea. And also don't limit yourself to a single strategy. Um, different people respond to different implementations here. So uh, for sure, try all four of those options. So now we're going to go into the Q&A. Thank you so much for everyone who has been waiting. Uh, so what if I get negative feedback on my public board? Jackie from Toronto, thank you so much. So let me go ahead and answer that. If you get negative feedback on a public board, uh, this is where we have moderation tools. So if I'm going to go ahead and shift into admin view. So yeah, if you're getting feedback that is, you know, let's say less than helpful, uh, you can go ahead and always edit a comment. Uh, and that goes for if the comment is made by any user. So let's say Rainisha here, I can go ahead and edit this comment. If, uh, if I'm like, eh, kind of janky, it makes the app look less than perfect, you know, it, it, or I can just delete that sentence. So that's one thing. Uh, but really, what I would recommend is respond. If you, if you show that you're responding to clients, um, that is going to mean a lot to them. So here we can go ahead and see what that response looks like and what the user uh, responds then in response to your response. Sorry. <laughs> so here we can go ahead and um, and do that. When you get negative feedback, it is actually helpful. You want to thank people for negative feedback. Try and find the intent behind the phrasing. If the phrasing is hard, look for the substance of their criticism. Um, and if it is just completely unhelpful feedback, you can always just go ahead and change the status to closed and be like, hey, this is not particularly useful feedback, or we've already answered this or something like that, you can close it. Worst case, you can go ahead and delete the post or even mark it as spam to prevent that person from posting again. If it's clearly spam, um, you know, sometimes that'll happen. Uh, you can go ahead and ban that figure. So let me take a look at other questions. Kat, thank you so much. Is there a way to limit spam feedback segmentation to prevent that? So one thing is, for sure, be using that mark spam button here. That spam, uh, that feeds us and we, you know, go by IP addresses and things like that. So we have things on the back end to mitigate and prevent spam as much as possible. Uh, if you are seeing a lot of spam for whatever reason on your board, please do reach out to our support team. We'll be happy to go ahead and take a look and see if there's, there's anything um, odd in that. Um, but yeah, if you're getting a lot of spam on your board, um, yeah, there's there, there are strategies we can implement on that. Um, now, you can have segmentation to prevent that. Another thing that you may want to do is in your settings, you can go ahead and on your boards, change the privacy to private. And you can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and limit this to just users and customers. So that way, someone has to be identified by Canny uh, using our single sign-on or the Canny SDK before they can participate in the board. So changing it to a private board, that may be a helpful way to go. It does reduce feedback from people who land on the board who may not be clients yet. Um, so that's also something to keep in mind, but that is definitely an option to cut way down on the amount of spam. Um, anonymous, let's see, can I lock down feedback to my paying customers? Uh, yes, you can lock down feedback to just paying customers. This is actually what I just kind of outlined. Uh, if I change the board to private, I can say, hey, this is only for users and customers. Uh, and that way people have to be identified before they can participate. Also, you can just allow anyone to give feedback and then you can filter it by segment to be like, okay, Everybody gave feedback, but I only want to see what my long-term high-value users did. So I can go to dark mode, and instead of the 46 total, now I can be like, okay, there are 11 here that are in that user segment. Uh, and if I want to pull this up, I can be like, okay, show me only long-term high-value voters and what they think. So that is where we're, we're getting that. Uh, thank you so much for your question here. Just going to mark those as done. 
And how do I know which feedback to prioritize is the next question. So which feedback to prioritize? This is where Kenny's roadmap function comes in. I'm kind of glad you asked that. <laughs> um, so yeah, once I have feedback in, what do I work on next? This is where the roadmapping function comes in. I can go ahead and send posts to the roadmap. So from here, I can say, all right, let's go ahead and get this on a roadmap here. Now, once it's on the roadmap, then here is where I go through and I set up all the things that matter to me and how we're weighting those, how we're calculating those. We take all of that and then we divide that by an effort score. So let's just do this for a given post. Let's actually, let's create a new post. So example post. So with example, we run it through our system here. So we say, what is the value increase? Uh, what is the storage increase? Is this gonna affect our storage? Uh, support, what is the rating on support? Well, support is gonna have a lot to say here. So uh, it's a four star from them. It's past security review, the design is done. Um, the security factor here, marketing and you know Fibonacci, you know, whatever, kind of things you want to weigh out here. These can be just about anything. And then we divide that by the effort score. Let's say this is going to be a five on the effort scale. So now that gives us a total score. We can go ahead and sort the and see where that lies. So that's now number four on the priority list. So very, very helpful, that road mapping function. That's going to help you determine, okay, this is the best use of our resources based on what we value and how hard it's going to be to implement. So yeah, thank you so much for that question. Um, let me see here. Are there any other questions coming in? Nope, it looks like we are all set. Fantastic. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today on the webinar. Again, we have been recording this. We will follow up with a recording. We are also going to, um, uh, yeah, touch base with you. So you should expect an email here. Thank you so much to everyone for coming out. Uh, this was our first webinar. So very happy that it went as well as it did. Uh, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care.